I have long dreamed of a $200 graphics card hero, an affordable little card that can handle anything you might want to use it for. Following years of budget card droughts and price increases, I wasn't sure $200 would ever again be the sweet spot of price and performance that it used to be. But with the release of Intel's B570, I have decided to bestow upon it the $200 Hero Award. But I give this award begrudgingly, and with lots of asterisks afterwards, like how it isn't actually $200. But given the inflation that we've had and how expensive everything else is these days, it's close enough. Indeed, accounting for inflation, the B570 and 580 bear striking resemblance to AMD's Radeon 470 and 480 cards from 2016. That was probably the last time a $200 graphics card hero came out. With the cards able to run any game out at the time, often even at high settings and at a more demanding 1440p resolution, and with just enough grunt to handle the upcoming VR titles, which was the future technology at the time. These days, requirements have changed. What's appealing about cards now is if they have enough VRAM and ray tracing performance, decent upscaling, and enough general performance overall to keep up with the current console generation. Luckily for the B570, it manages all of this. Not with much to spare. It's not about being the price performance sweet spot anymore. It's just about offering a card that has the bare minimum in every way and doesn't have some horrendous compromise somewhere. Thumbs up, B570. Well done for reaching the bare minimum. But these days, for something in such an affordable package, that's still something to be praised. VRAM. Cards used to have more than enough VRAM. It was never an issue. The moment it started becoming an issue, they'd abruptly double the amount for the next generation, and it would be all dandy again. Overkill, even. In 2013, the Radeon 290 came out with four gigabytes of the stuff, and that was fine. That was more than their rivals were offering at the time. I think Nvidia was on like three. Nobody asked for more, and yet AMD still doubled it to eight gigabytes for the 390 in 2015. Back then, that seemed like utter overkill. But as the years have gone on, 8 gigabytes no longer is overkill. It's gone from being a surplus to being the standard to now being seen as the bare minimum and with limited future potential. So with 10 gigabytes of the stuff, the cheapest B570 at least gives us a token amount extra over this bare minimum amount, while the B580 provides an ample 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Still not massive, but that's something to be praised when AMD and Nvidia cards at this price range still only offer 8 gigabytes of the stuff. So that's a clear win to Intel right here. With ray tracing, Intel's cards outperform where you'd expect them to be for this tier of card. Again, not by a huge amount, but enough of a win to reliably keep up with the competition. Hello, Fluffy. And sometimes to even pull ahead of them ever so slightly. So again, they deserve the award, but only by a bit. And their excess upscaling is nice as well. Definitely better than FSR, but still not quite as feature rich as Nvidia's DLSS is. Don't knock over the graphics cards. Knock over the small one, you can do that. That was cheap. Come on, come on, come on. And Battle Mage can keep up with the PS5. Like it or not, games are always designed first and foremost to work on consoles first. So if your PC is as fast as a PS5, it might not run games well, but it will at least run them well enough to get by. I wish I didn't have to hold this mouse fluffy. I'll just use you as a mouse mat, there we go. And so the B570 should last you until the next generation of consoles is released. The PS5 is roughly the speed of this tier of graphics card, like the Radeon 7600, the GeForce 4060, and obviously Intel's B570. The B570's 10 gigabytes of VRAM and decent ray tracing helps it to pull marginally ahead of what the consoles can offer. Again, allowing the B570 to achieve its target of being just above the bare minimum in every way. Elsewhere, these Battle Mage cards are a little rough around the edges, their power efficiency isn't quite as good as the competitions, and there are some titles where a slower processor will drag these cards down more than expected. This is a bit problematic for a budget card, which tends to be bought for slower systems with slower processors, and normally to be used on eSports titles, which seem particularly badly hit by this slowdown. But at the same time, the games remain in a playable state. Intel have come a long way since their first generation of cards, which sometimes literally wouldn't work with some games. I trust Intel to continue improving in this regard. So yes, the B570 gets the award from me, but begrudgingly, because even its bigger brother, the B580, is priced close enough to it and is faster enough compared to it 
to encourage an upsell. But where does that lead to? If you're chasing that balance, you risk being upsold all the way up to the 5090. At least the B570, which sounds very similar actually, establishes a lower baseline to start your search at. And I always approve of a newer card being sold for a lower price. Times have changed, in some ways for the better. Look back a few years to the crypto boom and the idea of a $200 card of any sort was lunacy. MSRPs didn't matter. A $200 card would be sold for more than $400. It's why I had so much praise for the Radeon 6500 XT. And that was a terrible card, but one that did at least stick to its $200 asking price. If you needed a card at the time and wanted to spend as little as possible to get ripped off as little as possible, then that card did at least get the job done and would weather the worst of the graphics card storm. Compared with that card at least, the B570 is massively better in every metric. But then times have changed and there isn't so much of a shortage at this price point anymore. The market is flooded with second-hand offerings that can be had for even cheaper than this card sells for. Intel's competition typically discounts previous generation cards like AMD's Radeon 6700 and Nvidia's GeForce 3050 or 4060, which fill the lower ends of the market. But again, I would like to praise Intel for actually providing a new offering intended for this low price point straight away. Another reason I can't get too excited about the B570's performance though is that it's pretty much the same tier of performance that we've seen a dozen times before. It's pretty much a GeForce 1080 Ti, which became a 2080, which became a 3060, which then became a 4060. And there are only so many times you can see those same benchmark numbers for the same games and still be excited about them, when you know you could have had them five years ago but for just a few hundred dollars extra. So we're pretty much talking about a tier of performance and VRAM that's been available to the market for eight years at this point, just at a lower and lower price and with a few extra features. Which begs the question, is it worth only spending $200 on a graphics card anymore? Or should we shift our expectations? Now I know this sounds sacrilegious. I've been screaming for a decent budget card for years and now we've finally got one. I'm like, but do we really want it? Look back 20 years and the graphics cards used to cost less. But they also became obsolete much sooner. If you bought a card in 2003, it would become obsolete by 2007. It was brutal. I'm actually referring to the Radeon 9600 there. I really wish I'd got the 9700 instead, but that just proves my point. Sometimes it's worth spending more. Every generation of card back then provided such a major price performance leap to the market. These days, not so much. Not in terms of raw raster performance anyway. When you hear people proudly claiming they're still gaming on an 8-year-old 1080 Ti, it's a sad remark on the state of affairs since. The opposite of this would be like the first generation of Ryzen. Hugely more powerful and affordable than what came before, but they started such a fierce arms race within the processor market that, with hindsight, they aged fairly quickly and poorly compared with the generations that followed. So with graphics cards not being quite like that, maybe you can justify spending more on them, knowing they'll be in your system for a very long time. Sure, being able to get the B570 for $220 sounds great, but maybe you should have spent $700 on that same tier of performance eight years ago by getting the 1080 Ti instead. If you'd done that, you'd be in the same state right now and you'd have had eight years of gaming at higher settings out of it already, rather than just embarking on your journey with a card of that tier although you, you wouldn't have excess upscaling and ray tracing support. As another example, I know someone who owned a Radeon 480 who only recently upgraded to something else, and he told me had he known how long he'd be using that card for, he'd have spent more on a GeForce 1080 instead. There's no point in looking back with hindsight and saying what you should have done differently, but it might be worth applying that reasoning to your buying decision today. What you choose to get today could be in your system in five or 10 years time. Do you want to start that journey with a card that's already scraping by with the bare minimum? Or would it make more sense to bite the bullet, to spend more today, and to get a better experience out of your gaming for a large chunk of your life? I think it's great that cards like the B570 exist for people who just want something to get them by as cheaply as possible. But for the rest of us, it might be time to consider a higher price point sweet spot. Like, not massive, but $400? This could be where the upcoming Radeon 9070 could end up shining if they don't mess that launch up. It might be where the new GeForce 60 tier of cards land. It might even be where Intel's hypothetical B750 card could land. It could be the new price performance sweet spot that $200 used to be. And rather than just what the B570 is, being the cheapest price you can get a graphics card for, it might actually be one that you'd want to spend money on. Oh, fluffy. Oh, fluffy.
Oh, you're so adorable. Oh, oh. 